Hello everyone. Welcome to CNA, the daily newspaper analysis. So today we are back with the following list of topics to discuss. So let's start. The first topic says about Supreme Court transferring itself all pleas related to same-sex marriages. So recently, what Supreme Court has did? So that Supreme Court recently has transferred every sex same-sex related cases which was pending in Delhi High Court, Gujarat High Court, as well as the High Court of Kerala. Okay, so since several petitions are pending before diverse high courts of the same subject, therefore the Supreme Court decided to transfer all the petitions before the respective court. And now Supreme Court will decide the issues related to the same-sex marriages. Okay, so when I say about the same-sex marriages, the term that is known as the LGBTQIA plus community came into prominence. So what is this LGBTQIA? AI, it is basically lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, intersex, and asexual as well as others. So they are the people who don't identify with the cisgender heterosexual ideals. And in India, the LGBTQIA plus community also includes a specific social groups, which is a distinct community, basically the hijras, and the culturally different either as neither men nor women. Okay, or they are men who behave like women. So at present, they are referred to as the third gender. Okay, so we could see that it has been 74 years since our country became, sorry, 75 years since our country became independent. And still the LGBTQIA plus group is fighting for their social independence and basic rights. Even in the recent times, the Indian Supreme Court on 6 September 2018 decriminalize section 377 which titled homosexual relations as unnatural offenses but then we look around in the present scenario there is still much work to be done so therefore abhi isi ko interpretation karne ke liye hamare jo chief justice of india hai that is chief justice of india chandra chud ji unhone ye case apne upar ya supreme court ke upar liya hai to abhi wo log iska please decide karenge Okay, so that's why it was basically in news. Coming to the next one, unfair tender norms in Make in India. So we know about the Make in India program. Okay, so to boost Make in India center flex unfair tender norms and advisory identifies over a dozen conditions commonly introduced in tender conditions that went against the local suppliers. So today, local suppliers ko boost up karne ke liye kuch kuch jo yaha pe rukawate the unko hatane ke liye yaha pe ek tender norms pe start karenge so that the local suppliers can get a boost okay so we know about the make in india program which was launched in 2014 and make in india aims to transform the country into a leading global manufacturing and investment destination okay so ck basis pe yahan pe do teen data bhi diya hua hai so nothing more in precisely about this assertion but basically here the to boost this make in india program center flex some of the tender norms so that all such number of brands basically coming in from outside can cannot affect the local suppliers or the local brands which is basically grown in this country of India. Okay, chota sa ek topic tha, that's why. Chalo, next mein aate hai. Permanent deployment of the UK ship in Indo-Pacific. So recently what we have seen that as mentioned by the United Kingdom's High Commission, the first port of call of the ship and underlines the United Kingdom's and India's intent to collaborate in the Indian Ocean region. So what is this port of call? See, when a ship leaves the port of origin, it may halt at the port in between before reaching its final destination port. This halt port or intermediate port is called the port of call. So also called port of refuse, port of call is usually not a part of a ship's itinerary. So the vessel may call the said intermediate port and need a stopover due to various regions like cargo operations, stock of supplies, load and unload cargo, ship-to-ship -ship transfers, crew chains, bad weather conditions, and unforeseen emergencies. So now, about this move, the Royal Navy offshore patrol vessel HMS Tamar sailed to the Andaman and Nicobar Islands on as a part of its permanent deployment in the Indo-Pacific. So this HMS Tamar is one of the Royal Navy vessels on permanent deployment in the Indo-Pacific, which is set out by the UK's integrated review. So now, India is the first port of call for the ship and underlines the United Kingdom's and India's intent 
to collaborate in the IOR, that is the region of Indian Ocean, and wider Indo-Pacific. So the SEP Bridges to India is an opportunity to further strengthen the shared maritime domain awareness effort, and the Indo-Pacific will drive future growth and prosperity of the respective world. Okay, so on that basis, we have a Andaman Nicobar, hai, to usko port of call bola gaya hai. so that's an important part with respect to this country of India and its cooperation with countries like UK. Okay, chalo. next mein aate hai, Indian all women peacekeeping troops in Sudan. So recently what we have seen that all women team from India to keep peace at Abay on South Sudan and Sudan border. Okay, so it's basically a region, agar maan lo yahan pe upar Sudan hai, so we have got a border like this. Okay, so this border is one place. So here is the South Sudan. This border ka region is called Abe. Okay, Sudan ka capital we know about Khartoum and South Sudan is Juba. Okay, so therefore this UN Charter gives the Security Council primary responsibility for the maintenance of international peace and security. And in fulfilling the responsibility, the Council can establish a UN peace operation. So now we know about that UN uh, India has even contributed a lot many number of its paramilitary personnel in this respective countries to deploy the peace in this in this areas so now this all women peacekeepers are now in this region of abay as a part of the indian battalion in the united nations interim security force for abay so the women platoon will provide relief and assistance to the local women and children in one of the highly operational and challenging conditions under the un flag so this is india's largest single unit of women peacekeepers in a UN mission, since it deploys the first ever all women's contingent from the CRPF in Liberia in 2007. Okay, as a part obviously of the United Nations. So, Indian women particularly have a tradition in peacekeeping. So, Dr. Kiran Bedi, UN's first police advisor, Major Suman Gawani, and Shakti Devi have made a mark of themselves for UN peacekeeping. Okay, so now we are going to go here. So, you can see that this is a region of India. And towards the towards the region of South Africa, towards the region of African continent, we could found a region which is known as Sudan, basically a country of Central Africa. So, dek sakto yahan pe kaise inko welcome kya ja raha hai. Thik hai? Chalo. Next pe aata hai. Lastly, political parties are not like companies. So, yahan pe there is a condition ki aaj aisa bola gaya hai yahan pe uh, like writer ke dwara ki raik. Like, Aajkal political parties apne aap ko ek corporate industry ya corporate companies ke tarap behave karne lage hai. Okay, so therefore yahan pe bola gaya hai ki like how you can change your approach towards being a political party. Because a popular trope among political commenters, especially in the upturnment of important elections, is that political parties are like corporations and their leaders are like CEOs. Okay, so this analogy is very much of misleading as it directly goes with some of the distorted views of how political parties function. So therefore, the key to understanding Indian politics is to understanding how political parties function in our country. So a key difference between a political party and a company is that parties have claimants and volunteers while a company has employees. So the difference has an impact on all aspects of decision making and operation of two entities. And the purpose of a political party is to capture state power in service of some stated social agenda. So therefore, today, in this recent trend, if you see, we see that there are various number of functioning of political parties which are indeed disenable trends towards corporatization and professionalization. So chief ministers are today using uh, bureaucracy to bypass ministers and the use of political consultants to bypass the party's organization are other examples of professionalization of political parties. So this professionalization of parties also has facilitated rampant party hoping by political functionaries. So, isi ke baje se yahan pe bola gaya hai ki ultimately the politics is a value-driven enterprise. We should seek competence and accountability from political functionaries, but the way forward is not through the corporatization of our parties, but it is basically through the attachment that we have towards a political party. So, therefore, we need to create a difference when we are directly creating a political party and we are directly setting up a respective company or industry, which is basically performing some of the business-oriented functions, which is not at all related with a political party. Okay, so on that basis, we have a discussion kiya gaya hai about the political parties being not a corporate industry. Okay, so we have this five number MCQs. Please do attend these MCQs and do join our WhatsApp and Telegram channel and do join us regularly at 8.45 p.m. 
to solve some of the past 25 years question papers which are very much relevant for you for your upcoming prelims APSC. So that's all for today. Thank you and Jai.